and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today we are very pleased to welcome Father Jose Ramon, a priest of the Archdiocese of Madrid in Spain, who is celebrating with us this morning. Father, you are very welcome. It's also a great pleasure this morning to be celebrating with the Healy family the confirmation of their eldest son, Daniel, and the first communion of their younger son, Dominic. So please keep both Daniel and Dominic in your prayers throughout Mass. Would any children who are going to children's liturgy please come to the front of the church? Brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from the dead, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned land, lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced that they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. 
So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these were written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Oh, dear brothers and sisters, Jesus, we know, is unstoppable. He won't let anything get in the way. After being betrayed and abandoned by his disciples, Jesus still appears out of nowhere to impart his goodness and his mercy. Now he came and stood among them, not to condemn them or to rebuke them, but to extend his peace. And he said it three times. And immediately he addresses their doubts and puts them at ease by showing them his pierced hands and his side. And then Jesus breathes on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. Now he further gives them the grace to forgive sins. And so this is amazing. It's like Jesus is oblivious to the past and how they let him down. Now what a merciful and loving God we have. Now St. Pope John Paul II said that mercy is the central nucleus of the gospel message. It's the very name of God, the face with which he revealed himself in the old covenant and fully in Jesus Christ, the incarnation of creative and redemptive love. And so, yes, the disciples were locked up in a room in fear, in guilt, going nowhere until Jesus showed up. He came in peace and in mercy to forgive, and he blessed them with the gift of the Holy Spirit and also empowered them to forgive others. And we all need forgiveness and God's mercy. Now we know that sin keeps us enslaved with guilt. It creates a big divide between us and God and keeps us from receiving all the graces that God wants to bestow upon us. But today, on this Divine Mercy Sunday, again, Jesus reaches out. He breaks through the barriers of sin to make his mercy and forgiveness available to even the worst of sinners. Now, every year, the first Sunday after Easter is Divine Mercy Sunday. It was established by St. Pope John Paul II in the year 2000, as was commissioned by Jesus years before through St. Maria Faustina, a cloistered Polish nun who died in 1938 at 33 years of age. And so St. John Paul considered the message of God's divine mercy his special task. He also believed very strongly that the church's main mission in the latter days is to manifest God's mercy to all. Now, along with encouraging people to pray the chaplet of divine mercy, 
In obedience to Jesus, St. Faustina also commissioned a special painting of Jesus with rays coming from his heart with the inscription, Jesus, I trust in you, noted at the bottom. The white rays signify water to make souls righteous, and the red rays represent his blood, which is the life of souls. Now every year, Divine Mercy Sunday is an invitation for Christians to continue to trust and to persevere in the trials of life with confidence in the goodness and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Now, as Jesus' secretary, Divine Mercy, St. Faustino wrote in her diary what Jesus intended for the feast. He said, and I quote, whoever approaches the fountain of life on this day will be granted complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. The fountain of life involves going to confession shortly before or during the day and receiving Holy Communion. Jesus also wanted the image, which is the painting, solemnly blessed and venerated publicly on that day so that every soul may know about it and a mercy that's available to all who venerate it. Now, you may ask, well, what are the graces available to us when we pray the Divine Mercy Chapel? Again, I quote from St. Faustina's diary, Jesus told her to say unceasingly the chapel, chaplet I, I taught you. Whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death, and priests will recommend it to sinners as their last hope of salvation. Now, even if there were a sinner most hardened, if he were to recite this chaplet only once, he would receive grace from my infinite mercy. Jesus also states, I promise that the souls that will venerate the image of divine mercy will not perish. And I also promote victory over enemies already here on earth, especially at the hour of death. He said, I myself will defend it as my glory. And he goes on to say that if we recite this chaplet for a dying person, the pardon is the same. It's incredible. Jesus makes it so simple for us that even a child can understand. It's almost as if he's saying, come now to receive all you need, all the grace, all the mercy that I'm making available to anyone who asks on this day. Jesus wants to prepare us to be his spotless bride before he returns again. And so we're invited to continue to celebrate this day at parishes throughout the city, at St. Joseph's Parish with prayers and devotion, praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet together this afternoon. Now, even though we have not seen Jesus face to face like the disciples did, or felt the wounds in his hands or his side, yet we believe. And so blessed are we who have not seen but yet have come to believe in his divine mercy. Let Daniel Joseph Healy, who is to be confirmed, come forward with his sponsor.
I do. In the joy of this Easter day, we turn in prayer to our Heavenly Father, who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead. The response, and let our cry come unto thee, will be sung. Please join the choir in the sung response. We pray that on this divine, on this we pray the light of truth be given to us by the risen Christ will shine upon all those who celebrated the sacraments of initiation at Easter. We pray for all young people who are discerning God's will for their lives that they will be blessed with wisdom and courage. We pray that all those who are suffering from warfare, especially in the Holy Land and Ukraine, will be given strength, courage, and peace by the risen Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our 
We pray that all those who are sick or suffering, whether in body, mind, or soul, will find comfort and consolation in their risen Savior, and that those who care for them will be blessed and strengthened. pray that the glory of the resurrection will shine on all the faithful departed, especially our deceased parishioners. We seek the intercession of our Blessed Lady, whose heart was filled with joy at the good news of the resurrection, as we pray together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 536, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, 536.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, Accept, O oh Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those who have brought to new birth that, renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. And by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, and Wayne, his auxiliary, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, 
especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son our Lord we your servants and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim this holy victim this spotless victim the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellanus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but all my saving work and my soul shall be given. Let Dominic Anthony Healy, who is to receive his First Holy Communion, come forward with his parents. Our communion hymn is number 6.5 in the red celebrate and song hymnal, Life-Giving Bread, Saving Cup, 6.5.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of announcements this morning. Um, a thank you to the Reedy family who made a very generous donation towards uh, the purchase of the torches that you saw used at the Eucharistic prayer. Uh, they will be used on all major feasts to give greater honor to the Blessed Sacrament. We are, however, still about $2,000 short of the complete purchase and shipping price, so if anyone would like to donate, it would be gratefully accepted. A reminder that the celebrations for the Feast of the Divine Mercy will take place this afternoon at St. Joseph's Parish on Paisley Road. Uh, there will be a holy hour with confessions at 2 o'clock and then the major celebrations at 3 o'clock this afternoon. This week, the lamps at the Regina Chaley Shrine burn for David and Alice Gruber, for the living and deceased members of the Gruber family, for the repose of the soul of Charlie Bone, for the intentions of Shirley Bone and the living and deceased members of the Bone family, and for the living and deceased parishioners of the Basilica of Our Lady Immaculate. The gift shop is open in the parish hall after Mass. And finally, a big congratulations and assurance of our prayers to Daniel and Dominic Healy. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.